We, we had, had, we did have screwed up. <laughs> we had a lot of screw ups. Like afterwards, we would play with a couple, and then we afterwards we're headed home. We're like, why did we do that? Well, you didn't say no. Well, you didn't say no. Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 67, everyone. We're Finn and Emma. Fresh back from Atlanta Poly Weekend. Still in Atlanta. I was like, yes, we're still in Atlanta. We're Holy at- shit, there's a panda bear head. <laughs> you never saw those? All right, we're going to have to send out a picture of these panda bear heads. We're <laughs> okay. in this closet. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, we are currently standing in a closet. Some listeners that are from Atlanta are incredible people and reached out to us before we came here. They heard we were coming to Atlanta for the conference, and they invited us to stay and get to know them and get to. they showed us some of Atlanta. So that was amazing, and we had a wonderful time, but we're currently in their closet so that we can get a little better sound quality. Yeah, they are... Some of the coolest people on the planet. So thank you to them for everything and for reaching out. And we really had a wonderful time. We did. And And we had an awesome time meeting tons of people at Atlanta Poly Weekend. Yes. Some of our previous guests were there. Some tons of new, fresh faces were there. Lots of awesome people who were excited to hear about the show were there. So it was all around a great weekend. It was really fun putting faces to names of previous previous guests that we've had even though we met them over skype it's not the same as in person so and speaking of faces these fucking panda bear faces. i can't believe you just noticed i don't those. know well I, I just thought they were a pile of towels <laughs> they're literally panda bear heads <laughs> we will get permission to post a picture of these panda heads <laughs> i'm gonna wear it i know you are okay so that's fun <laughs> So look in the show notes, guys. This will be funny. <laughs> and so other quick travel we're doing, uh, World Domination Summit will be in Portland June 24th to July 1st. This is not a com, um, not a conference for Domination. the lifestyle or BDSM, which some people thought because it had domination in the name. Yeah, it's not related to non-monogamy. However, it's going to be an awesome conference, and if you're interested at all, uh, go check out the link in our show notes and read about it, because we will be there for that week, uh, and we would love to meet people that are out there. Yeah, we're, we're not sponsors or anything for them. We just, we, we're going to be there attending all the different workshops with everybody else. So if you're going to be there, look for us. If you're going to be in the area, give us a shout-out. Yeah. Uh, You might have noticed at the beginning of this episode, there was a little bit of new music. Thank you to Siggy. Yes. This is the second time we had to record this because my wife messed it up and called him Ziggy. No, I didn't. You said Ziggy. No, I didn't. A little bit of Ziggy. Uh, Anyway, that wasn't the reason we were re-recording. It's part of it. (laughs) No, it's not. So thank you to Siggy for the music. I'm sorry, Siggy. And thank you to anybody in the future who sends us music. We will try to work it in. As we can. Yeah. We, also, uh, we are trying to get new music here and there, so we're just trying to see what fits. So send it to us. The other thing we forgot to mention, who the hell we're talking to this week. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Donna and Alex. They, we, were, we were too excited about standing in the closet. And no, it was the panda heads. <laughs> that, okay, Donna and Alex, this week's interview is amazing. Yeah, they are a couple who is 60 years old. They've been married for 20 32. No, 32 years, and they've been in doing the non-monogamy for 22 of those 30 years. No. 20 Damn it. 20 years out of the 32. It's just been a say, long just time. Say, just say ish, and you're ish. good. It's fine. They're great. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a really cool conversation because we've had a lot of people reaching out to us saying how they think they can't get into swinging or non-monogamy because they're too old. And those people are usually like 50 and these people are 60. And then they also talk about people that they know who are way older than they are. So it's awesome interview. It's really cool hearing about just the outlook on life as we get older is not uh, just everything dries up. Right. So thank you to them for sharing that. And we look forward to... They have a wonderful attitude and story. So enjoy this week's interview. Real quick, though, 
two announcements. If you haven't heard of freestdcheck.org, please go check it out. It's a relatively new resource to us, but there are a bunch of um, places in the U.S. in certain cities where you can get free STD check or testing. So not a paid sponsor, obviously. They they do it for free. We're just we found this a couple of weeks ago, and we we really like to promote the STI testing. And if there's a free resource. That's what we would love you to do if that's what it takes. So please do that. If you can't get to one of those because there's not one close. Go to freesecheck.org. Nope, not free. You, you are already there. We just determined. <laughs> that's not what I just did. We just determined they can't go there. So you could try <laughs> stdcheck.com. Yes, that one fits right on that. <laughs> and while you're there, you can save $10 and you can get STI, STI testing done. It's super easy and convenient. You don't have to make appointments. Um, and you can get your results in as little as one day if you paid for their expediting service. So it's super awesome. Check it out, save 10 bucks, and it helps support the show and support us. Yes, go to normalizingnonmonogamy.com slash resources to see all of those links. I think that's everything. We should be able to go and hear what Donna and Alex have to say. Let's go. Long time coming, but Alex and Donna, thank you for coming on the show. We've been trying to get in touch for a while, but well, our, no, our, we've been in touch. We've well, just been trying to schedule this interview for a because few months. of our travel and yeah. blah blah blah. So anyway, thank you for finally making it happen, and yeah, we're excited to talk. So are we? Yeah. Awesome. So I guess for we don't know you that well, and the listeners, of course, don't know you. So can you give us a little bit about your background? You know what you're comfortable sharing. Let's see. We're 60 years old. Um, we are. Uh, married going on 32 years. 32 years. Um, we have two kids with a boy and a girl in their 20s, who, so we're empty nesters. Uh, they're off. And they don't live near us, so we don't have to worry about them uh, showing coming up. in time. Right? Show, showing up at the same club. Right. Uh, right. 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 That, that, there's a story to that, too. But anyway. <laughs> we'll, we'll circle back. <laughs> right. Um, we're, both, uh, we're both professionals. We both uh, work crazy hours and um i guess we work hard and and right. play hard right so and uh and we moved down to south florida just three years ago okay so, uh, from the northeast so right. um we're still getting used to it right. permanent snowbirds yeah awesome. well, we, we moved down actually for work so okay uh, yeah yeah one of those freak ones you know a lot, a lot of people in meeting don't you know, already retired I'm like no we're still working and we'll be working for a while you know <laughs> right right hey that's all right at least it's warm there yeah yeah exactly. I don't, yeah I, I don't have to deal with the snow and the long commute perfect well i guess in in terms of the non-monogamy thing what is your i guess what does it look like for you two in a i guess in a short brief summary and then we can peel it apart like an onion what <laughs> i won't say that again <laughs> We've technically been in the lifestyle and non-monogamous for probably like 20 years. Um, but for, I'd say about 10, 15 of those years, we were with one couple. Okay. okay. And, we, and, and I don't know about Alex here, but for me, I didn't even know that the lifestyle existed. We were just, you know, with this one couple, it was just friends that became friends with benefits. And so when that sort of fizzled out only because of life getting in the way of, of different things. We found out about the lifestyle. Okay. Um, and um, we've been, since I guess since our first trip to Desire is when we found out about all the lifestyle sites and so, meeting people, and and we've just been exploring it. Right. Yeah. So you, you kind of stumbled into it, but you didn't know what it was until... Un right. Until like that couple kind of so? fizzled out. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the couple who got us into it um, were actually friends of Donna's from before I entered the picture. And then uh, kind of once we we were dating for a bunch of years and we were friends with benefits before, I'd like to say the friendship got out of hand. <laughs> um, the, so I met them somewhere along the way. So probably somewhere in the year before we got married. And they were always, um, the husband was always joking about that after we got married, we would get together with them for dinner, go to the movies, go to a show. And he was always joking, hey, why don't we, you know, swap and, you know, stuff like that. We're like, no, 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 no. And um, 
and somehow I would watch like really bad porn. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, really bad porn days. And we'd watch that. Then I think they had a waterbed. So they said, why don't you try the waterbed? And then the wife had some um, vibrators, like way before the magic wand, good ones. It was like these, you'd buy the back massages that you would use as. Uh Yeah. And she'd say, I want to try this. We got this. So they were slowly introducing us into this. And then, and then somehow along the way, we were trying to remember it all. Um, we just like, we swapped and we've only, we were only soft swapped them mm-hmm. for, the, for the years we were with them. But it turned yeah. out that, uh, the wife wanted was, me really was behind <laughs> it because she really wanted Donna. Right. So, um, right. you know, it was like, uh, play with Alex to get Donna. Right. You know, kind of uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And okay. She yeah. and I played a lot too. Right. So, yeah. um, and we spent a lot of time with them. We would, you know, get together, we would. We went away for weekends with them. You know, we just did a lot of stuff together. And it was just kind of like the sex part of it was friends just, an, yeah, it was just friends with benefits. Right. And, you know, we didn't know soft spot, full spot. You know, it just was not part of our, our lexicon. Right, right. You know, and like I said, we didn't know that, I didn't know, maybe you know, but I didn't know that other people will do this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so not to how many people do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so early on, when, so the for for that entire duration though, it was just what what you would call now soft swap, right? There was never a, a full swap. Okay. Yeah. And Donna, did you experiment with the other woman? Then did you? I guess have you? How do you identify? Do you identify as bisexual? Um, it's funny. We always argue about that. I guess so because I'm not. I don't go out. I say I'm not because I don't walk around looking at women going, oh. I really like to do her. She's really pretty, whatever. But I really enjoy being with a woman. And so, yeah, with her, we played just the two women. And there were times when we, the two of us would just get together without the guys. Okay. And we would have an afternoon together, whether at my house or her house. So, yeah, so it was something that I think I always thought about. Like, if you want to talk about fantasies or whatever, I always thought about it. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm... So I guess I can say I'm bisexual, but like I said, I can walk around looking at women going, oh, yeah, I want to be with her. Yeah. If you tend not to do that for guys. Either. But yeah. <laughs> no, it's guys I look at more. Yeah. So even after it fizzled out, have you remained friends or was sort of the end of that, the end of the, the friendship as well? <laughs> that's, a, that's a sore <laughs> point. Itself. What happened was, I think, we're not exactly sure. Their kids were older because they got married a lot before us. Their parents were aging. They had some health issues, so and I don't think they knew how to end, whether they potentially wanted to end it or not, but it slowly petered out. We're still in touch with them. Okay. But we haven't, we haven't, seen, them we in we a haven't while. seen them in a while. seen them in a while. So we, now we just like yeah. Facebook and email on occasion. Yeah. So, so I, have a, I have a question going way back. I know this one is going to be maybe tough to answer, but, but you, you kind of resisted the, the swapping and the sexual approaches from them for quite a while mm-hmm. after you finally gave in and and tried it i guess can you take us back to like after that happened like what what happened between the two of you like were you like i i could see that being a little destabilizing i don't know what it uh, it wasn't it wasn't at all it was um i mean we were totally comfortable with them because they were really good friends mm-hmm. and um right. uh, it was it was really hot I, I think it just, I mean, it just built on our relationship. It just built on our relationship, and we were pretty tight at the time. And this wasn't destabilizing or unnerving at the time. I mean, you know, it's funny because you know now, now I guess you could say we're experienced, um, and you know, we li- we've listened to lots of podcasts, and, and in addition to yours, sorry about <laughs> that. And you know, a lot of the things people say about communications and and building or reinforcing their relationship we always had a great relationship and we realize now that we were constantly communicating about this and constantly checking in and we found it hot to see each other with other couples and getting pleasure from it right so it we never i don't think we ever had jealousy um and it it just was just good and it just felt natural so right 
and, and it, even and from them and then from going on the years with other people we've met what we what we've learned is we, we were always good together mm -hmm. from, from day one when we were together but you learn techniques from other people so you sort of throw mm -hmm. those in and all of a sudden oh you know and, and you and so our relationship sexually has gotten better yeah. yes no, it adds to it that the, your relationship with other people adds a lot to your relationship. It definitely, definitely does. does. And, and Donna always used to say, you know, especially once we started playing with them, that, you know, it, it, it's not meant to be monogamous. You know, humans are not meant to be monogamous. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. I used to say that the only animals that are monogamous are humans. I mean, there are penguins. And okay, there are a few that, <laughs> few that mate for life, but pretty much it's just not natural to just be with only one partner. But we always joked, but like years ago, we always joked, I, I would never have an affair without you there. Right. Like yeah. if I play with somebody, you're going to be there. Right. And that's always been our thing. We still, we always, I'll sometimes just play with women without him, but. I never play without like never, her. Never plays without and, her. And usually when we play, we nine times out of ten we play in the same room, we play together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, to fast forward a bunch of years, so we were slowly starting to see them less. And also during that time, Donna <laughs> has a problem in wearing bathing suits. <laughs> so we sought out and found in New Jersey a um, clothing optional beach which we started going to. It's a fairly famous large beach uh, at the very northern end of the Jersey Shore. And um, we would go there all the time. And it's, you know, though there's some fooling around on the beach, it's a federal beach. So if they catch you, you could be in big trouble. Right. So, you no, know, tell, us, tell the story about the first time we went. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the first time we went, or you tell the story. The first time we went, he's, I said to him, you know, it's clothing optional. I, I'll probably take off my top. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna, you know, take off my bathing suit bottom. And we didn't, we hadn't been to the beach in years. We're chugging with a, with a uh, big ice chest with food and chairs on our backs and a towel, a blanket. And he goes to put out the blanket and pull down the chairs. And by the time he turns around, I'm totally naked. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? And I said, Well, I'm looking at all the people on the beach. Nobody's wearing a bathing suit. I would feel out of place if I was the one wearing the bathing suit. And that was the end of it, you know. And I feel much better when I'm not in a bathing suit than when I am. So that was the start. <laughs> <laughs> and so us by going to that beach, and we would go whenever we can, whenever we were able to, uh, Donna had said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could find a place like this to go on vacation where it would be clothing optional? Thanks to the Internet, started doing some research and came across – a bunch of places, Desire, Hedo, um, I think it's called Temptations, Temptations yeah. Hidden Beach. And we just kind of fell into one travel agency who's, who specializes in one of the main travel agencies that specialize in this. And they spent a lot of time explaining to us the differences between the different resorts. And in listening to us, they said Desire is probably where you fit. Mm -hmm. Which travel agency was it? Um, it was Castaways okay. yeah. in, uh, in the Woodlands in near Houston. Okay. Uh, and, we, and we've stuck with them ever since. We kind of, you know, you kind of become a creature of habit, right? And, uh, and they've been good to us, and we have our account there, and they kind of know us by now. And uh, so we went to Desire, and we went to Pearl. And, which uh, had just opened. Which had just opened. Like two months before. Okay. And so we went there, and it was probably only half occupied, which was great for us for the first time. We didn't go. We knew that it's an area where you can, you know, meet other couples to play. In addition, they told us there are couples who come just for the clothing optional and kind of the sexy environment. And so we went with the idea of we're not going to play with anyone. We're just going to have a good time and be in a sexy environment and be able to run around naked. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what we did. And that's basically what we did. But while we were there, we met one couple from Texas who we hung out with a lot and it was just really friendly and they weren't hitting on us, even though they played and they taught us about the websites. Ah, okay. Of course, also at night in the hot tubs you're learning. So we didn't know about the dating sites for the lifestyle. Okay. So Roger gave us some great advice as to how to set up a profile 
and uh, we went home and registered for SDC. He had recommended that we pay for, at least for the beginning membership. He said, so, you know, otherwise people don't take you seriously as, right. a, as a free member. And we block free members from seeing our profiles. Mm -hmm. We set it up and then he validated us. And so we, you know, suddenly became real, uploaded some pictures. We were kind of off the races from there. Yeah. And then right. so after. we met, we met a couple, a couple contacted us a few weeks a few later. Weeks later, And Alex talked to them and uh, he said, well, the wives have to talk. And we've learned this now that the wives have to talk because you want to make sure that the wife is on the same page, yeah. that the husband's not just doing this without the wife. So right. And not trying to just convince her, his wife. Right. And so I had, a, I was on the phone with her for quite a while and I said, not a problem. Let's, let's meet. And we, so we met for dinner. We had, we had kind of met, they lived wife. about a, they lived about a half hour north of us. We met midway at a restaurant that we knew. Right. Um, and we ended, we hit it off. We ended up, they said, do you want to go back to their house? And we were like, okay. <laughs> well, had you talked about it leading up to that? Like if, yeah. if yeah. things go well, we, we're, we're ready to take it beyond getting naked and just going to a clothing optional resort to, Hey, we're ready to start playing with couples again. Yeah. yeah. So when they reached out to us, um, I showed Donna the profile first and I go, what do you think? And she said, Oh, they look really nice. They're like around our age. They're maybe now a tad, they're a tad older and uh, an attractive couple. And it was a great profile. I like that good command of the English language. And, um, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> um, and we just, when we met them for dinner, we just hit it off. But in anticipation of dinner, we, we spoke, we talked about, well, if they invite us home, do you want to go? And she goes, okay, we have to, we'll see if I like them. Right. And, you know, and we also talked about our, you know, comfort and what level of play, you know, if it leads to that. And, right. um, when, and like, I still do it. I usually, now when we meet couples, I'm always like, I'm going to be soft swap unless I feel really comfortable with the person and then I'll go. And that's still my attitude. But we went home with them and it was a full swap. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how do you communicate that to each other in the moment? Because I think that maybe is something that, that people struggle with, not us personally. We've never struggled with that. Uh, never. <laughs> but but the, the like, hey, where are you at? Where am I at? And, and, and doing that on the fly. So at that, that time, and I, I remember the, dis, the dinner pretty distinctly, we just looked at each other and said, sure. Right. I think and we were just ready to try it. We were yeah. ready to try it, and we were really comfortable with both of them. And, we, and they're very good friends of ours to this day. Um, we talk to them all the time, and whenever they pass through Florida or we're up north, we get together. Not always for play. I mean, we have vanilla dates with them also. They've become very close friends on all levels. Right. But we have, over the years, figured out communication. So we we, we had, have we did have screwed up. <laughs> we had a lot of screw-ups. Like afterwards, we would play with a couple, and then we, afterwards we're headed home. We're like, why did we do that? Well, you didn't say no. Well, you didn't say no. So now we're like, we you know we now we know the four people have to like each other. We have to communicate. It has to be a four way discussion. And now we sort of like we'll sit next to each other, which that wasn't always the case. We used to sit across from each other. So now we sit next to each other so we can sort of nudge each other. And now we have like sort of a signal of if my hand goes on his knee, you know, I'm like, OK, if my hand goes on his knee and squeezes it, it's like, no way. You know? <laughs> um, and now we have a couple right. of like safe words. <laughs> right. <laughs> And but we've had a few uh, yeah, we, times we were like, why did we do that? Yeah, this, yeah. It, it was once or twice. Um, uh, well, once I invited a couple back, and it was like afterwards, I was wondering why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and there were other times uh, that Donna said, sure, we'll go back with you. And I'm like, we are? <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> right. like, why are we doing this? Right. And um, But I think that was a couple. More we haven't done that in a few done years. That few years, right? So we've gotten better at it, right? And we do. We like we don't take one for the team anymore. Um, I don't think we really ever did. Well, there was like one couple that we met, and we played with. You know, they seemed okay. We played with them. The woman, he, I, um, Alex really liked the woman, but the husband I couldn't stand. So I was like, that's it. You know, we tried. We played with them once, but they want to get together again. Yeah. No, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah, so you get sort of hit and miss sometimes. 
So after that, after that first couple and the, you did the full swap and you left and you, was it like, yeah, this is for us. We're ready to just move forward. Or was there, I guess, how did it hesitation? Yeah. How has it progressed since then? I think we, we went, they told us to go on SLS. Yeah. They had told us also, like we were on SVC and they said, you know, where we are up in the Northeast, SLS is more popular. And, you know, we understood that there's geographic differences. And uh, so we also signed up for SLS and cloned our profile and pictures. Right. And, and, then, and we started meeting a lot of people. people. I don't know. Did people contact us or did we contact people? I think yeah, the whole Connecticut crowd. Right. And then a few. Like, right. And then we. Re- right. I think then, people may have contacted us or they were having a party. They invited us to their parties. It was. Yeah. It, it was, we, we saw it was for us. But our first few. The first few couples we met and we played with, like on first date, were amazing couples who we're still very good friends with. Mm-hmm. Um, one couple we're meeting with a bunch of their friends who we know uh, down at Desire uh, over Halloween. Oh, cool. Yeah, I had met up with them just for lunch during um, on a business trip, and uh, they uh, said, hey, you know, they're going to Desire a couple of weeks before we are in June. And it's like, oh, we should have coordinated this. And then I said, but we're going back for Halloween. And then they told me who's going. And it's like, I whip, I whip out my phone and start texting Donna. Like, um, they're going but they're going over Halloween. And guess who else is going with them? <laughs> right. Can we take, can you take some more days off of work? Right. And Donna's like, okay, I'm on it. You know? <laughs> I just quit my job. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so, you know, we met some amazing people who became very close friends. And then we started meeting people that were not so great, always. Yeah. Uh, then it well, became... there's people you click with and there's people you're not. That's just, that's right. the way it is. Right. right, exactly. And we're trying now to be, I don't, I don't want to use the word pickier, but choosier maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, that we have to definitely connect with them because you want to connect with them inside the bedroom as outside the bedroom. I want to, yeah. be, I want to play with people that I can be friends with, you know. Yeah. Like um, you mentioned, um, like trapeze, or I mm-hmm. used to go to a club in, in Connecticut, and there it's there it's like anonymous sex. Mm-hmm. So you go to the club, you really don't know anybody, and you're just playing, and then there's other bodies, and you can possibly play. So that's one aspect of it. But if you're gonna have somebody at your house or go to a party, um, I prefer it that it's I have that other connection. You can actually have a conversation that you like them. Yeah. You know, I guess I guess the term that I've been hearing kind of thrown around now is like sapiosexuals. Mm-hmm. Like you know, the intellect is very important, and um, and and just also kind of like the friendship level. Yeah. Of, of getting of getting to know people. Though we right. do, if we meet a couple and we go out, we'll play on first date. I mean, right. you know, we're empty nesters, like we said, so we could bring people back. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or and we've had good, you know good meetings and then like um alex was was texting you on t- twitter or something with somebody oh this yeah this, this is this, a great this story. couple and then turned out they were going to be down in in florida doing some diving and we said okay so when you're down here connect with us and we said yeah they'll never connect with us and sure enough about two weeks before they when they, they about did. two weeks before they were coming down all of a sudden i get a private message on twitter Hey, so we got our plan set up. Can you meet us down in South Beach? We said, sure, why not? And we we went, went to, down with no expectations. We made dinner reservations. We figured if we didn't like them, we can always just go to dinner ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, we met them at their hotel. We went across the street to the hotel for drinks, and we just clicked. And they're probably what, like twenty years twenty years younger than us. Mm-hmm. And um, but we just clicked, and the conversation flowed. And then we went out to dinner, and then we're like, well, do you want to go back to a hotel room? They asked, do you want to go back to a hotel room? We said, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had a fantastic time. It was really hot. I mean, yeah. they, they, they were great. And, but they live in Chicago, yeah, in, in Florida. But we happened to be in Chicago. Um, just a year ago. Just a year ago, Mother's Day. And we texted them and said, hey, we're going to be there. Are you available? And they made time, and we got together. And it was, I mean, it was just as fantastic the second time. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's it's fun, too, to hear, you know, you, you sometimes, like, we'll hear from people or you talk to people and they say, oh, well, there's nobody in my area and it's just not possible. But 
it's we know we travel quite a bit to see other people and it's not like you're necessarily making specific trips but it's like hey i'm going to be in your area mm-hmm. do you want to hang out and i think just being able to be flexible enough to say yeah why not let's go see what happens and worst case is we spend time together and i think that's the attitude that that really needs to be adopted by a lot of people because they're just afraid to take the risk but it's 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 a pretty low risk right well and it's i guess you have you open up yourselves to so many more people, right? When, you, when you're willing to travel a little bit. Right. Right. And, right. and when we travel, we try to, well, in Chicago, we haven't visited any clubs or anything. We just didn't have the time. But we'll, we'll go traveling to places, and we will ask friends about, um, about clubs in the area if they've been to get recommendations. And we've had amazing times. And Some bad, of it. <laughs> No, but, bad, bad, and that the clubs were bad. Not yeah, not bad, bad because we had a bad experience. It right. was just that the club sucked. But, right. yeah. um, but we also went and went to some amazing clubs, and some we just played by ourselves, which is for us still very hot to be in a playroom mm-hmm. with other people and just each other. And we still very much love to have sex with each other. So it's like, you know, right. so it's not an issue. Right. And um, and then there are other times we've just met people at the club or met people at the playroom and have had an amazingly hot time and I can't tell you what their names were. (laughs) We don't judge. Nope, no judgment. (laughs) Uh, Neither do we. (laughs) But also, we we go to trap. We haven't gone in a few weeks, but we go a fair amount because it's pretty close and it's a really awesome club. Um, It's very big. I mean, you've, I guess, been there. We Uh, we we actually haven't been there. But we will go someday. So... It's more fun when you go with friends, but we go and the playrooms get very crowded because it's a large club, but it could be really hot. And we've we've met some really great people there. And other times we go and just have a great time by ourselves. The music's great. The dancing's great. And you can watch. Uh, there's watch. There's good food. <laughs> right. And there's like something for everyone. If you know, if you're a voyeur, it's great. And if you're an exhibitionist, it's even better. And there's, you know, people of all ages and interests. It's, you know, you could meet a judge or you could meet, you know, a policeman, (laughs) you know, or a college professor or, you know, or just, um, you know, we met, you know, kind of awesome people who are blue collar. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter to us. It's the package. It's the it's the people. Just normal people. Yeah, that's the point. Going some back to what you were saying about meeting people, when we moved down here, we really didn't know anybody. And we're like thinking, how are we going to meet people? Because when our kids were little, we moved to a new place, you met people through your kids, mm-hmm. you met people through school or activities. And our kids are grown. Um, and thankfully, they don't live here. Uh, they visit, that's enough. Um, <laughs> So, like, how are we going to meet people? We decided not to live like one of those 55 and older communities where you would have clubs and do all the activities. And old people. And old people, right. <laughs> um, so it's been a little bit challenging to meet people. And most of the people that we have met have been through the lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the great, one of the fun stories, and it's a couple we've become good friends with, we knew from up north. And we met them through that first couple that connected with us through SDC. And we went to a whole bunch of house parties and some hotel parties, and they were there, a very attractive couple, and like around our age. And we just never played with them for whatever reason. We we talked to them, and and were very friendly with them. We just never got to play. They then... um, There's now... There's now snowbirds. Yeah, they're now... Well, they're probably going to be more than snowbirds. Right. Um, they bought an amazing apartment in Fort Lauderdale. But they were, when they were at the beginning of the process of doing that, all of a sudden I get a text and says, hey, we're coming down to Florida. You guys are around. Let's get together. And said, oh, yeah, that's great. And um, They're like, how come we never played? Yeah, they came over. We had them over for drinks. And, uh, and they just came out and said, how come we've never <laughs> played? And we said, we were going to ask you that. <laughs> And they said, well, you're interested. And it's like, oh, and we have a clothing, we have a swimming pool that is very private. Um, well, I don't wear bathing suits, so. Yeah, because <laughs> none of them wear bathing suits. Right. So part of the criteria of buying this house was that we would have a very private pool. 
So I said, hey, let's go for a swim. So, you know, a second later, everyone's naked in the pool. And, you know, and it progressed from there. So, and we see them now, well, whenever they're down here and probably within six months, they're going to be living here full time. And they just have become good friends. And but again, it's basically through the lifestyle that we're making for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is nothing wrong with that. But, you know. No, yeah, we, we totally agree. And we've actually tried to do that multiple times ourselves. We've moved to new locations and our first strategy was, well, let's, Let's start with the lifestyle crowd. See who we can meet. Those are the most fun people. So, <laughs> but it, it, we've had uh, different levels of success. I'd say. But. Yeah, we're getting better at it, though. <laughs> yeah, that part of that could be on us. <laughs> well, one of the things is that we really suck at is closing the deal. Oh um, yeah, we do too. <laughs> but it's but it's funny because when we meet somebody, no, I can't say that. I was going to say when we meet people here. It's a little bit easier. Desire, we always, we're terrible. You're flirting with people all day at the pool, and you say you want to go to dinner, and they're like, oh, oh no. And you meet them at the hot tub, you want to go back? No. So. Well, also, sometimes we just, we're not great at asking. So. Right. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it was funny because on Swinger Diaries uh, page, do you know them? Uh, you know, we know, yeah, we them? know. Yep. yep. Swinger Diaries. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they, they joke about that all the time, that they're, like, really bad at closing the deal. And we're going, wait a minute, that's us. Right. I, th- I think that's a so, lot of us. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and even though we've been doing this for a while, we still sometimes find that challenging. But, you know, but we've had, though we've had some great successes. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And it's it's not, right, we're not really conditioned to, just be blunt and ask people like, Hey, do you want to go back to our room? And yeah. we all know what that means. And I think, or we, we have some idea that it's leading somewhere. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, a tough thing to learn how to do. And even when you think you know how to do it. Well, I think it comes out of, at least for me, like respect for the other people. You're like, well, I don't know. I don't want to be asked them something that they're not comfortable with. And of right. course, like if they're not comfortable, they'll just say no and it's okay. But right, it's hard to it's ask. It's also a fear of the fear yes. rejection also. You know, yeah, so. absolutely. I was curious about something you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago when you said you moved to, to Florida and your goal was to not move into like a, a 55 and up community and, and basically try to avoid that. Um, I guess, can you talk a little bit about navigating in the lifestyle as a couple who is older than uh, I, I don't know that you're in the upper end or not, but I know there's been a lot of people that have actually messaged us and emailed mm-hmm. us and said, well, you know, I've been hoping to get into this, but now I'm in my 50s, so I'll, you know, it's basically over for me. And it's and they basically, it's yeah. like they turn 50 or they turn 55, 60. and it's a, they're just like, well, sex is done. And I think we yeah. we know that's not true, but I, I guess, can you talk about it from experience? Right. For us, most of the people we're meeting here are, um, I'd say, in their 50s. Um, We just met a couple who don't play, but they um, go to Desire. Desire. And uh, we click with them, like, amazing. And they're 68. 68. Um, And a lot of us. A lot of the friends that we were friends with in New Jersey are retired. You know, they're all in their mid-60s, and everyone's still going strong. So I don't know. To me, it's like, no, you know. Yeah, so with age, I to go with, you know, with somebody who's in their 20s or 30s would be too awkward. Um, although as our kids get older, then we'll be, I guess we have to keep moving up also. But we've been with some people in their 40s. I think it's more that you can have a conversation with them and you have more in common with them. Also, but, I, but also, I think it's kind of weird to be with someone my kids age. But also, yeah. I mean, but, you know, meeting couples, let's say, in their early to mid 30s, it, it's also a little um, getting together is tough because they have to worry about babysitters Right. You know, the advanced planning. I mean, we met one couple of club who we really like. We really hit it off with them. And they're really newbies. So, and you know, they're young. And they're young. And, um, and they have little, little And they have, like, kids. little kids. So it's we tried getting together with them a couple of times and no, no fault of theirs. They just, you know, they had babysitter problems and things like that, which we totally understand. Right. And, you know, we've just not been able to connect. We're 
when you you know dealing with couples who have you know teenagers or older kids the kids are self-sufficient at that point so they don't have to worry about babysitters there's other logistical issues you have to deal with sure yeah. <laughs> um but a babysitter is not one of them right. and also a curfew to get back right because you know the sitter is 14 or 15 yeah. you need to get him or her home right. at a reasonable yeah. hour you know you can't do the thing like roll in at three o'clock right. hammered and say oh okay i guess i'll right. take you home now but I think <laughs> our our whole pretty much everyone we've played with i would say maybe there's a a handful maybe on one hand who have been a lot younger Mm-hmm. But I think most of the people that we have played with currently and in the past have been, say, 10 years younger to 10 years older than us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I, I would hope that sex doesn't end at 60, 70. We hope we keep going. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think that was sort of what we were hoping to hear is, like, obviously it, doesn't, it, didn't, it didn't end at 60 for you. And if you're playing with couples in their late 60s and 70s, it sounds like you've you've still got some some life left in you, right? So, and I think that's that's yeah. really exciting to hear, is and and hopefully encouraging for people that are out there going, oh well, I'm I'm fifty or I'm fifty five, and we're basically done now. And it's like, well, I don't think you're done. Right. It's funny because some of the podcasts have had discussions about age, and you know they say age is just a number, and there is truth to that. It's really the person. I mean, yeah. we have vanilla friends who are our age who probably haven't had sex in 10 years mm-hmm. and you know they're they're like old people when we see them right. it's like they're aging differently than we are right. maybe it's our genes maybe it's just the lifestyle maybe it's the amount of titos we consume <laughs> <laughs> you know i i don't know what it is but i think it's also mind over matter right mm-hmm. if you if you have an attitude i think and a thought that i'm gonna go out i'm gonna have a good time and you know maybe will put on club clothes that uh, are not always age appropriate, but are you know, but are trapeze appropriate or desire appropriate? And we go out and have a great time and go and go dancing and and drink and 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 yeah. just play, whether by ourselves or with others. You know, it's a mindset. It's not you right. can't you can't say, oh, I'm 55. It's it's over. Right. It's because right. it's yeah. really not. Right. As long yeah. as I still have my working knees, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think there's really something to that going out in and living it up like you're 30 or 20 or 25, right. whatever, because so slight divergence. There was a, a podcast I was listening to a different, not a lifestyle one where they were talking about a study they did where they took all these people who were in their like sixties and seventies and they basically put them in like a, a time capsule. They, they recreated like uh, a building and turn as it was a house from like the forties or fifties. And they put all these people in there and like, they were there for a couple of days or whatever. And they, when they left, like people who went in using canes and walkers walked out like they were back, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And just, it's that sort of being in the environment and the mindset. Yeah. The mindset of like, Hey, I'm, I'm younger again. And it, it keeps you younger. So I, right. Right. And it goes back to your point where you raised about that when we were looking for places to live and we weren't necessarily looking to live in a, gated community we happen to wind up in one and it drives me personally it drives me crazy it's just it's just not us but it is what it is and but we we had told the realtor that we're not interested in anything that's 55 or older because that's not even though we're that age demographic you want to be around little kids we want to be around little kids and we're actually in our development and it's a very small subdivision we're probably one of the older couples who have bought in the past few years because there are some people who are, you know, we bought our house from folks that are in the eight, in their 80s and were going to independent living in Florida. Um, <laughs> but most of the people buying have young kids. And, you know, there's a school bus stop. Right. And you see that when I leave to work in the morning, I see the kids waiting for the bus. And, you know, it's great. And kids are bicycling and, and rollerblading and, and, right. and on scooters. And I think it helps keep you young, too, as opposed to my mom, who's lived in a 55 and older since they moved in when she was 62, and now she's 90. And, you know, I'll call her. She goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to this funeral. I'm going to that funeral. I'm like, yeah, because that's what happens when all your friends go and get older, you know? Yeah. If you want to live in that kind of, to me, that's kind of a depressing place. By the way, she's mm-hmm. turned over her friends. She, right. Her friends are all now, like, 20 years younger right. than her. Yeah. <laughs> They're all in the lifestyle, too, right? That she's, yeah, uh, some, of, some of them we think might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we're gonna, we're gonna have to go to her 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 house one time wearing our black rings and see who hits on right. us, you know. <laughs> but it's um, yeah. but you know, but it was definitely to age. We think a mindset. It's um, yeah. Um, you know, we really do have a mix of friends in different ages, and it hasn't been an impediment. And right. I mean, we're not out seeking thirty five year olds. Right. Um, though some of them, you know, the couples are pretty hot, but yeah. we're not, you know, we, we tend to look more for people our age, plus or minus probably five years ten or years. ten years. Right. You know, it's it's just been great. So if you said, anyone who says that, you know, they can't see doing it in their 50s, send them our way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we will. We, we, you, you, You're great with newbies. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think you know Emma hanging out with me, being the younger one, keeps her young as well. Really, so that's, that's, that's that, where this is going. That's where it went. I had to take it there real quick. <laughs> six months is not that much different. Alex is younger than me. Yeah, by six months. By six months. Hey, yeah. it's exactly the same. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I think we have to now pry, and you said there was a funny story about your kids and the lifestyle way back at the at the way beginning. Yeah, so our daughter has been uh, dating a guy for a bunch of years, and they and they live. She's going to be twenty five. Okay. And they uh, college. and they they live together, and um, which it was funny because they they moved in together when they graduated college. They graduated college together, and they came to us, and she she came to us and wanted to know how we'd feel if she moved in with a boyfriend who we knew quite well. I mean, he's been around a lot. And, you know, who are we to say, no, you can't? I mean, because we could say you can't. She's going to do what she wants anyway. She's an adult. But also, you know, we're not suddenly going to be the morals police here, right? So <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, for their for her birthday last year? I think her birthday. For her, for her birthday last year. Um, and her boyfriend earns a good living. He's, he's, in a, he's in a professional. He's in a profession. He was going to surprise her with a trip. It turned out that we're going to go to Mexico. Cancun. And they were going to go to Cancun. They wound up, they were going to fly it, it turned out. Mm-hmm. And she calls Donna and she said, oh, we're going to Mexico. So where is it that you go in Mexico? <laughs> and you're like, uh, um, you know. Like, I've um, always told me go to a small resort down in this little fishing village. I've never given them the name. <laughs> but now you're trying to think, find a, a resort to give her a name. And all <laughs> the resorts, that, you know, adults only resorts are all huge, you yeah. know, South Exelon to one of those places. So I didn't have to give her a name, but I said, how, what, you know. Yeah, I, you talked your way out of that. I talk, somehow I talked my way out of but it. But we asked, where are you going? And she said, oh, he didn't tell me yet. It's a surprise. Right. And we're going like, uh-oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> going, okay, we're not, we're not going to be in Mexico then. It turned out they went to a, a, some, a regular, some, a regular yeah, resort. Some, yeah. but not, well, not, that's what they're telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. But knowing our no, daughter, she took I, pictures. And knowing our daughter, well, we took pictures too, but not at yeah, the resort. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, you always have to take a few pictures to prove you were in Mexico. And, yes. You know, we'll walk into town and take a picture at the, you know, the lighthouse or at, you know, the signs of Puerto Morales yeah. to just show you were really there. Right. So. Yeah. It's, but, it, yeah. but it was it was very funny because right. we like suddenly well, like. All of a sudden, like, was like, uh oh, what do you want? <laughs> Where we go, yeah. and we we've been. We well, think we've we've been a couple of times, and every time we would say we're going to Mexico, they go the second time, the third time. Like you're going there again. Now they don't even ask. You know? They just know <laughs> that you're. That's what, where you like to go. <laughs> right, exactly. And we, um, but I think we've been pretty good at keeping our lifestyle life away from them. You know, you hear stories about people who inadvertently have been outed, uh, some with not such good good effect on their lives. Um, or just with kids finding out. Or just with kids. Yeah, there was one couple we knew in the New York area where she loaned her daughter a jacket, and they had one of their swinger cards. She had one of their swinger cards in the pocket, and the daughter puts her hand in the pocket and pulls it out and goes, Hey, Mom, what's this business card? <laughs> um right. Yeah. Not good. That's not well, good. So I'm, I'm actually curious <laughs> on this topic because, right, so for some reason there's this stigma, you know, if if your parents find out, it's a bad thing, right, because they're your parents and they, I don't know, parents are parents, right? right. So from, from people who are trying to hide it from their kids, 
now that your kids are old enough, I guess, what would happen if they found out? Would there be any real negative repercussions? I don't think so. I just think our daughter's very prudish. (laughs) (laughs) Our son son is not. Our son is not, but our daughter is. So I don't know how we grew up. She grew up that way. And and some recessive genes yeah, came out. Yeah, something came out. <laughs> I just think that she would eventually you know, go, ooh, and I don't know if she would judge us, but it's totally foreign to her. I think sure, she'd find sure. it very strange. Yeah. Her son, on the other hand, I think would be, oh, you do that? Right. Really? People right. really do, do that? that? Yeah. You do that? Yeah. But it's like, because, um, you know, you suddenly have to see your parents in a different context. Right. Right? Like you never right. think of your parents having sex. No, right. 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 So right. you know, you know, all kids were born by immaculate conception. So, <laughs> especially, um, especially me. <laughs> so you know, kids, you know, you never think of your parents that way. And um, my parents did. Yeah, well, your mother did. My everything. mother tells us she's did everything. <laughs> she goes, "Yeah, I've done everything." Okay, except I know my my father was, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I, I think everything's relative. I right. think her concept of everything and our concept awesome. of everything is, right. I think, a little different. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, um, but we've always been very open but age appropriate with our kids about sex. So we. And nudity. Yeah, and nudity. But as they got a little bit older, we started wearing clothes in the house um, because. They, they, uh, our son, I don't think was, by the time he was like six, was like really comfortable with mom running around topless and stuff like that. Um, you know, societal. Right. I know, mean, they'd, they'd the come knocking on the door and I would just go naked and they would, they would leave, you know, they wouldn't come in. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it became, but it was also very open as, you know, as they grew up and having, uh, you know, discussions about, sexuality or gender identity uh, or things like that, particularly like when they were in high school and they started becoming a lot more aware of and having gay friends and things like that. It was, you know, kind of dinner table conversation. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't discussed in whispers, you know, right. it was like, right. um, like, Oh, you know, guess who came out to their parents this week? Kind right. of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And well, whose parents are gay. Or whose parents were yeah. gay. And in their high school, there were a lot of same sex stuff. Parents. Right. So it's, um, uh, you know, so, you know, these things were not taboo topics in our house. Um, so it was, and then, and then when they started coming home, my son came home his first year of college with his freshman girlfriend, who thankfully didn't work out. Um, <laughs> you know, he asked if she could sleep in his room and we said, sure. Then when our daughter came home with a boyfriend, she asked where he's going to sleep. And we, we with a very straight face, said, oh, in the guest room. <laughs> no wonder and, she's approved. You br- you did it to her. And we just said, just kidding. You know? <laughs> he's sleeping in the garage. <laughs> so, you know, so these, so I think if it came out to them or they discovered it, I don't know if they would freak, but they would find it, you know, suddenly they have to think of their parents as sexual beings. Right. right. Which you never think of parents that way. But with us, they have met one or two of our lifestyle friends. That's that, what I was going to ask. If, yeah. Who is that? Like, where do you know them from? And I said, oh, oh, you know, your father knows them from work. You know, he's our accountant. You know, an accountant friend of his. So we've, we've we became friends with a lot of people through work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that becomes a little tricky when they know all your friends and all of a sudden, and when now I'm tell my daughter we're going out and I said, we made, you know, we have some going out dinner with friends. She goes, oh, that's so nice. You made friends. <laughs> you did. So I, 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 was tempt, I was tempted to say, really pushing the envelope here. <laughs> yeah, we met them online. Right. <laughs> yeah, we did. But now, but now they're to the point where, you know, they don't ask, oh, where do you know them from? And, right. you know, things like that. So, right. you know, she'll sometimes, we're going out Saturday night, it's, you know, we're heading over the trap and she'll call, we're in the car. Oh, where are you? Where are you going? And I keep going, tell her we're going to a sex club. You right. know, it's <laughs> like. So we're going out. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to know where we're going. We don't ask you where you're going. Right? Well, she doesn't ask anymore. And they're used right. to us. And they've always, you know, even when they were teenagers, us going out and coming home very late. Right. So, um, 
it wasn't, you know, so that's not weird for them. Right. Yeah. So I was, I was curious backing up uh, again, when, when you made the transition from sort of being exclusive with a couple mm-hmm. to now there's all these other couples, potentially other couples or other people being introduced. Was there between the two of you, the discussion around your, your safety and your health about making that transition. Cause I, I would imagine for the first 20 years, it was a fairly closed system and the risk very, is somewhat low. It was very closed and there was no penis and vagina sex. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so, so there was never, you know, a discussion of condoms or things like that. We always use condoms. Um, but we also have, a kind of a semi steady girlfriend on top of everything. I mean, it's not, it's that's not like developed. it's just developed over the last few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, she was half of a couple that we were good friends with and played with and they broke up and got a very fast divorce. Um, so, you know, when, I don't know if you have friends who've gone through divorces, but like, you know, when they, you know, one, one gets the dog, one gets the house, one gets the friends, yep. one, yeah. trying, you know, right. kind of thing. So we got hers. <laughs> we got hers. And then even though it was a very fast divorce and we really liked her and Donna and she are a bit of a number. So we were very supportive of her through the divorce and the divorce went very quickly because they have grown kids. So there wasn't custody issues and there wasn't a lot of assets and things like that. And um, in Florida, as we learned, is a no fault uh, divorce state. So you can you don't even need a lawyer. You could just go and file the papers. Right. But you're, you're digressing. Yeah, but anyway, so... Um, <laughs> Gotta keep him on track. <laughs> basically, what he's trying to say is, so with her, we don't use a condom. Because with her, the only person she was ever with, like the 30-odd years she was married, was with her husband. Okay. And when she did, when they did play a little bit, she always used condoms. So okay. we've sort of broken our rule and with her. And, and she's, she's a little bit younger than us. They, they got married. They were very young. She was very young. She was in college. So, um, and we had that discussion with her. Um, she was spending a lot of time with us. I mean, she comes for weekends and just, you know, hangs out with us. So, uh, Donna and I talked about it before and then we brought it up to her and she needed to think about it and then kind of went for it. Right. right. So she's, right. she's the only one that we don't use condoms, but right. everyone else, even though we're good friends, Right. We use condoms. Right. And what Alex does a lot, which sometimes drives me nuts, is after we've been with a couple for the evening, on the drive home, he dissects it. <laughs> I didn't and get the, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> it's just my training. <laughs> and say, you know, what was your well, we got this term, like what's your snapshot? And I really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed that and we'll we'll pull it apart, you know. Less for me than than for him, but um, but we've always we ha- always had the good communication, except for those few times we what sure. we gone with. But for the most part, we always play in the same room. Um, we just I want to I want to know who he's with. He wants you know mm-hmm. part of the seeing seeing each other with somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so we we never really we, we always said we would. And we, and we and we go routinely for STI testing. Yeah. Um, and uh, we um, we're actually transitioning between primary care doctors now. But the, the doc we're leaving, um, we were out to. Um, I think he had a hard time processing it because <laughs> I think he found the idea a little weird. But we were out to him because um, I thought it's important that he knew. And then also when we get blood work done, he just now he would routinely order. Right. And it's the eye panel. So at least once a year, the insurance company paid for it instead right. of us. Yeah. And, uh, right. Right. Oh, she get tested, and um, you know, we get you know a full panel for STI. So. Right. Right. Just, yeah. right. Awesome. Well, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think yeah. there's uh, friends of ours in Florida were just telling us too. There's a place that you can get. Uh, free testing done as well. I need to look up the name of it. It's the website was freestdcheck.org, I believe. So we'll we'll put the link in the show notes, and that's something we actually wanted to mention. Is it's a pretty cool resource. It's uh, there's some in Florida, and they're in like maybe 15 other states. Yeah, it's like scattered around the country, yeah. but they're not everywhere. Just some certain places. So, 
Yeah. yeah I, some people, you know, probably don't get tested as much as they should um, because of the cost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it can be yeah. very expensive. <laughs> can be, and some places could be very, very expensive. Right. And, or they don't want to talk to their doctors to get. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that a conversation that you two have on the regular with the couples that you're meeting? Like, whether it's at the club or if you meet them online, are you, it, have you found it easy enough to bring that conversation up? Like, hey, when, when were you tested? We were tested this time, or is it? I ask directly, but we'll kind of sometimes work it into conversation about getting tested and, you know, kind of ferret it out. But even if, look, you know, your tests, are, if you're t assuming all your tests are negative, you're only negative on the day they drew the bloods. Yeah, sure. So you meet them two weeks later, you know, they could be carrying something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, you want you want people to be tested. You want them to test negative, but you're still going to wear a condom. Right. Um, and, right. you know, use some protection depending upon what your comfort level is. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you're also assuming some inherent risk that even those methods aren't aren't foolproof. Right. 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 That's, and that's the danger of the And also for oral sex, you know, we're not, you know, we're not using condoms. We're not using dental dams or things like that. So, you know, there's a certain risk of transmission of things just through oral sex. Sure. Um, a lot of people don't think about, but it, there is a risk to it. So it's, um, you know, everyone has to manage risk to the level they're comfortable with. Great. Right. Yeah. That's the uh, point. We're not in the lifestyle, although we did meet at Desire. We, we met a... Uh, we met a physician who um, should a, not have been in the lifestyle. Who should not have been in the lifestyle. He was like, like touchy phobic, you know. But right. I think, uh -huh. so I think he was sorry afterwards that he spent time talking to me because there were too many touch points in our lives. We knew too way too many people in common. <laughs> sure. He, he was at an institution where I trained. Okay. So, um, it, it was it was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, and we were introduced by another doctor from right, Chicago right. who said to me, hey, Alex, you really got to meet this guy. You have stuff in common. Right. And it was like, well, that was way too much stuff in common. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> well, you know, along those lines of weird things happening, is there maybe a... a that's some, what I was going to say. Blooper. Blooper time. <laughs> like what? something that's happened in the last four or five years or even in the last 20 of whether it's happened to you or because of you, not that we've ever caused a blooper, but Emma has. And then, yeah, yeah. If there's something, you're, something you're funny. You're innocent. <laughs> something funny that's happened to kind of show the lighter side of it and that we're not all perfect and flawless. So I heard someone talking at the bar, at the pool bar at Pearl, and I heard something from, uh, came up, that, you know, kind of, you know, my, my radar went, went on, you know, search mode now, and it was... It was an industry term he used. And I turned around, I introduced myself, and I said, I didn't mean to be eavesdropping, but I heard that you, you, you do this and this. He goes, oh, yeah. And he goes, what do you do? And I told him, and I said, so who do you work for? He goes, well, find no one you ever heard of. And I said, try me. And he gave me the name of the company. And I said, oh, I'm having lunch with one of your directors next week. <laughs> and he turned white. He goes, you're not going to tell him where we met. I said, what are you, fucking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and he's become a good friend of ours right. with his wife. Right. Um, right. And we they, we met at Desire about a year and a half ago and hung out with him and his and his newly they were newlyweds for you know four or five days. And, right. and I'm in touch with him all the time. And it's right. like we text each other and we right. talk once in a while. Yeah. So that you know that was a funny. There was another time. Well, there was one woman. Um, yeah, and she said, "Where are you from?" We told her she's from. Oh, she goes, "Do you know?" And we said, "Yeah." She goes, "Well, he's my cousin." And we're like. Okay, well, she goes, you're not going to tell him we met. I'm like, no. <laughs> and it wasn't like he was a good friend, but he was a social friend, and I right. see him from time to time. Right. And, and he's Mr. Straight Arrow. Yeah. He's a, a son, old southern gentleman from Memphis. Straight yeah. straight yeah. Arrow. Yeah. And right. every time I see him to this day, and it's four or five years, I just like him. <laughs> <laughs> I go, hey, I know you're a cousin blank. And, right. but I never do that. But yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Awesome. No, I think I think that's the uh, mutually assured destruction that, yeah, that exactly. we all signed yeah. up for. Yeah. And and then you know there's been things like you know you're going hot and heavy and then you can't get it up, um, 
like a little bit too much Tito's. Um, <laughs> and it's, I, but I can't really think of anything. Yeah, but the only bloopers have been like there are a couple of people like I blanked out because they were just like, why did we, why were we with them? Right. Yeah. Sure. It just didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> what is? Yeah. No, that, that's where it's. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Is there, is there anything else? I guess there anything else you wanted to ask? I was going to say the same thing. Well, then do it. <laughs> I'll stop interrupting you. Is there anything else you would like to share? Um, I just think the, the age thing. It's like, you know, I know I know there's a lot of younger people in the lifestyle. I, I'm amazed at how many like, you know, twenty something year olds there are, and I'm not I'm not sure, you know, thinking back to the way I was when I was in my twenties, that I would have been. Even if I was in a steady relationship or married, I'm not sure I could have emotionally or intellectually handled being in lifestyle. So I'm kind of amazed that some of these young people are are in it. And I think it's the comfort level, being comfortable with yourself and with your spouse or your partner, comes with I think age. So you know, you meet a we meet a lot of people in their 40s and up. You know, people in their 50s shouldn't think, well, the sands has run through the, the the egg timer and they're done. It's it's not that at all. Yeah, you know, life begins again at, you know, begins at 40, begins at 50, begins at 60. <laughs> yeah, you're just constantly learning more about yourself and your partner and life right. in general. Right. Exactly. And, then, and then the other thing is, is that, uh, and people say this all the time, it's, um, you know, life really took off for us once the kids went off to college. So they well, were, they used to go away to summer camp, so we always had our like, two months to the mm-hmm. house. It was six weeks in the six summer to, in the summer to, summer to, ourselves. to ourselves. But when they went, both went off to college, it was like, like okay. party time. And <laughs> we, we know people who, when suddenly the nest is empty, now suddenly have a hard time because the glue that held them together or one of the major components that held the relationship together with the kids. And now suddenly, like, hey, this is real life, like. What yeah. are we going to do? You know, we're not shuttling kids around to a game. We're not going to a tournament. Well, you know, then you get into the lifestyle and you make new friends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, but people who are having issues at that point, thinking the lifestyle is going to help them, are. Yeah. That's when you get trauma. That, that, yeah, that's when you get trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's exciting for us and encouraging to see that, that you two have survived the empty nest transition with, with flying colors. And and that we have at least, well, 28 years for Emma, <laughs> at least Thanks. 29 for me to go. So we're excited your, for that. Your birthday is coming up. But it's not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys find yourself back down in South Florida, yeah, um, let us know. just let us know. Yeah, yeah. we definitely well, will. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Like It's been a very, I guess, awesome conversation. And we love when people are so vulnerable with us and just tell us all their this is a story, so. And then we'll do it again when you're 70, and then we'll show people that, <laughs> that we weren't bullshitting. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's a deal. All right. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Well, it's a date. We set our timers. And, Ten years. And we will we will chat soon. So have, right. a, have a wonderful Floridian evening. Yeah, thanks again. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're still, still in the still in the closet, but we're also wearing the panda hats, <laughs> which is why our voices might be muffled. It's actually really fun. <laughs> we'll take a picture. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you again to our amazing hosts for letting us use their closet to record and letting us wear their panda heads. Yeah, these are ridiculous. And for taking us to all the amazing places in Atlanta. We had a blast. Yes. Thank you to Alex and Donna for dealing with this bullshit. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, guys. We didn't know we'd be finding panda heads in a closet. Actually, probably going to take this home. <laughs> so thank you to them for sharing their story. It was awesome. We really appreciate it. And yeah, we're super excited for what the next 25 to 30 years brings for us because We'll be 60 eventually. Yes. Don't, why are you talking through the eye? Because I'm so muffled. I'm it's not to... muffled if you, uh, you can't talk Fine. through the eye. I'll, t- I'll talk through the mouth. <laughs> so. This is a disaster. Hey, get it together. Next week, we've got, this is very serious. Next week, we have uh, an interview with some new bloggers, the Swinging Cajuns. They, they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. Their story is awesome. And we're not going to tell you much other than there is a huge 
a huge twist. Yes. A surprise. So tune in, in next week, please. It's awesome. But you gotta wait one more week for that. And in the meantime, if you're looking to meet some other people, we recommend you look at episode 58, listen to the episode, because we interview Nami and Bruce, who are the founders of the new app Polyfinda. Polyfinda. Sorry, Polyfinda, as it's pronounced here on the show. I'm crying. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, well, don't get their masks wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we're done. Yes. I we'll think see we're everybody done. in a week. And uh, we'll post this ridiculous picture in our show notes and probably on Twitter. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye.